For more on Salesforce results, let's get to Jared Weiss, fellow tech specialist at Jefferies. Jared, great to have you with us. What stood out about this quarter? So it was a very solid quarter all around. And I think what you're seeing after hours is more than a re- more of a relief rally than anything else. It's a very difficult and choppy software environment, as you guys have noted. And even today, you saw Anaplan down 12%, Workday down 3%. So I think this is just more of a relief rally in the context of a very strong quarter. Revenue is up 23% year on year, constant currency 20% year on year. CRPO, which is the best metric in terms of the health of the business, which stands for remaining performance obligations, it's basically a bookings metric. That was up about 20% year on year, slightly ahead of investor expectations. You're seeing the stock fade after hours right now. On the conference call, they're talking about their guidance for CRPO, including about 300 basis points of Slack contribution. So when you net that all out, it's a little bit of a guide below on Q2. Hmm. But they are talking up margins. I've heard, you know, I was listening to the call before. I heard Benioff mention margins 10 times in the beginning of the conference call. That's more than I've heard him talk about in a while. And I think that, that's the key in terms of sustained share price outperformance. If you get the margin inflections, you'll see the price follow through from a, uh, from a multiple perspective. When you say choppy environment for software, do you mean simply just the dynamic of the market? Software is sort of out of favor right now, or is there any doubt about the pipeline and about demand for these products as the economy reopens? Yeah, it's 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 precisely the former, Melissa. I think you know when we look at all the survey work that we're doing. I think in our latest CRM survey, we surveyed 55 partners. 100% of the partners said that their pipelines were flat to better than they were uh, versus the last survey. So all of the survey work continues to be incredibly positive in terms of the momentum of the of the business environment. It's more so as you think about just the steepening of the yield curve and the relationship between growth and value and software being out of favor versus some of the other more cyclical sectors. That's what I was referring to. Hey, Jared, they've got some great free cash flows. Obviously, they've got an an amazing amount of cash. Should they be using that cash to acquire still or should they be using it in a different manner right now? So, you know, if, if you look at the vision that Benioff has laid out, it's really hard to bet against him, right? They've They've done incredibly well with MuleSoft. They've done a really nice job with Tableau. On the call, they started mentioning all of the number of deals that are included with Tableau and MuleSoft in this most recent quarter, and they've really accelerated that growth. And if you look at what's happening at Slack, last quarter at Slack was the best paid net ad quarter ever. So he he has a vision. We should not be betting against him. He's getting this company to scale, and he's taking off Microsoft. He's taking on Microsoft from a competitive landscape perspective, pretty aggressively with their team's offering. So I think he's deploying it in the in the right manner. It's just the question of whether or not we get operating margin expansion associated with that. Jared, when you look at revenues, seventy percent of revenues come from the U.S., twenty percent come from Europe, ten percent come from Asia. If I were to look at this as an opportunity with Europe uh, lagging behind the U.S. as far as reopenings and coming back. Is uh, Mr. Benioff focused on the U.S. or is he focused on that opportunity where I would see it as a tailwind for Europe and Asia? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. I mean, U.S. software companies in general are over-indexed here uh, to the States for the most part, but Salesforce is one of the unique companies that has such a global presence and there's such un, there's such an untapped opportunity that he's looking to go after. So I think that's a great point in terms of, you know, you look at all the economies that are locked down that are hopefully going to start reopening here in the next six months with uh, with Europe at a you know 20 percent plus of revenues that should absolutely serve as a tailwind to, to Salesforce in the back half of the year. And as it was mentioned before, you know, they're doing a global Dreamforce event. Right. We shouldn't underestimate what Dreamforce could mean from a catalyst perspective as they get all the partners together. So that could definitely be a catalyst in the back half of the year. In your view, Jared, what is the software stock that that can best weather this rising interest rate environment? So, you know, when, when you think about the broader environment and the shift out of um, out of growth into more value platform, you know, that's why you know, Salesforce is such an interesting name because it's not that expensive, right? It trades at a 30, 40% discount to its peers. It's trading mid single digit multiple in terms of EV to revenue. So it really does offer sort of that best of both worlds in terms of garpiness um, with respect to the broader rate environment. And I throw other names in that group that benefits from that. So, you know, when you think about Garpy large cap software, think about Microsoft, think about Adobe, think about Intuit, names that have real free, free cash flow support, where if rates start backing up to two, two and a quarter on the 10 year, you don't get hurt as much on a relative basis. Jared, thank you. Good to see you. Jared Weisfeld, Jeffries. Thank um, you. Tim Seymour, which of uh, those names in Jared's basket do you like the best? 
I, you don't run far from CRM. I, I think Jared's point, I, I, I know it around six times EV to sales next year um, with a growing margin profile. Uh, again, the investment in Slack and the platform effect of Slack, uh, I, I, it, it's, it's not really expensive. And, and so uh, I, I think if you look at the stock, the volatility around the software space, some of this is you know, the, the growth to value dynamics. Some of it was that this, this, uh, this company went into the Dow Industrials, which we, we beat on yesterday a little bit in terms of a price weighted index, but the move for CRM uh, was, was massive on that, along with very strong numbers that Guy referenced. So four moves of 15% or more on drawdown since last September. I, I think, I, I believe the worst of that volatility is behind us. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.